Paul, thanks very much. This morning, it is out with the old and in with the new. There often comes a time in your life where you say to yourself, you know, I just got to get rid of all of this old stuff and start a new phase of my life. And it could be the result of children leaving the nest or simply aging itself. And recently, I sat down with professional organizer Julie Morgenstern to ask her a little bit about how you get started. But first, we caught up with one couple who is in the process of downsizing, getting ready to move on to the next next stage of their lives. And let's take a look. Larry and Rochelle Leader are preparing to move. They're trading in 11 acres of land and their 5,000 square foot home in Newton, Pennsylvania for an apartment less than half the size near Manhattan. The main reason for us downsizing was to make his quality of life better. Larry's four-hour commute to the city is exhausting, and he plans on working past retirement age. I wanted to continue working, hopefully for another eight to ten years. I feel like he's more tired, and it would be nice if he had a little bit more stamina. So by shortening the commute, it will be good for me. The change will be bittersweet as those empty nesters leave behind a home full of memories. We have uh, 30-year-old daughter, a 28-year-old son, and a 23-year-old son, all living in uh, locations beyond Bucks County, Pennsylvania. So there was nothing keeping us in this region. But once they move, they are determined to start a new life together. It's going to be an adjustment, but I think there is tremendous positives that go with the change that will make it an easy adjustment. Julie Morgenstern is the author of Organizing from the Inside Out. And Julie, good morning and welcome. Thanks for having me. So we just saw the leaders downsizing their lives. And I think it's so interesting the way that boomers are so much more mobile than their parents were. Is this a trend? Are we seeing more and more of this? It is a trend. I mean, our parents, the parents of boomers had one job for life, one home for life. They never moved. They never they moved never and left. you got to store your stuff in their attic, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> But this is completely different. I mean, depending on what study you read, people have seven to 11 jobs in their lives now. It's a different fabric, it's a different rhythm, and so there's so you're reinventing your life all over again. And you have later to, because society's to. not going back. No, it's not going back. So you kind of have to get energetic about it, and I could see, you know, the Campbells were, the, the I'm sorry, leaders. The, the leaders here, the Campbells, were, you know, both, it was bittersweet. It is yeah. bittersweet, but it is a real opportunity yep. for a new phase in your life. Let's mm -hmm. talk about how to downsize. Yeah. And you say the first thing you ought to think about is giving this new phase of your life a theme. Yes. When you have built your life a particular way, it's very hard to picture anything beyond that, you know? So the very first thing is to kind of give it a theme. What's the next phase about? Is it about, like, knowledge or is it about creativity? Like, what part of yourself are you going to express? And that gets you excited about moving towards something. Right. You start to visualize I can see that it. and sort yeah. of energize you, as you that's said. That's right. The that's next right. thing is, is once you've sort of established what your theme is going to be, is that you need to get down to work and take inventory of what you'll take and leave behind. Right. So there's two ways to look at it. One, you can kind of separate the treasures. The truth is we need very little, right? We're all happy when we're in a hotel room and we only have three things. So you just go through your home and you can either separate the treasures it's about 20% of what you own in every category is really what you use and love. The other 80% is stuff you used to use. Well, and this is what you say next is, is you got to get rid of this stuff. Right. But but for a couple who's been together for years, I mean, they, you can imagine the memorabilia that they've collected yes. of their lives. This can't be easy to no. get rid of it all. It's very hard. It's deep work. Basically, but with your theme in the horizon, you basically object by object. It's what value does this object have moving forward? How much space is it taking up? And what's worth more to me, the new life or the space that this object is taking up? And you really just go room by room and do as harsh and a do cut. I was going to say, you kind of have to be ruthless. You, you have to get have rid to, of stuff. Your goal has to be to release. It's not to hold on to. It's to let go of as much as possible. Lighten up. Okay, there is um, a, a challenge to sort of organizing and, and not deciding not to take it with you. And, and the final tip you have for the best way to go about it is to really get organized. Yes. I mean, once you really have gotten rid of things, you know, you have much less and, and you're power is in being organized. Store things where you use them. You want to group similar items. You want to label things. And you know what? For your new life, invest in good containers.
beautiful boxes, you know, and really house your objects that are your true treasures with dignity and beauty, and it really brings you into your new life, I think, with joy and happiness. It's inspiring. It's really, really good advice. Yeah, yeah. Well, it can be fun. Julie Morgenstern, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. And we should let people know you can read an excerpt from Organizing from the Inside Out by logging onto our website at weekendtoday.msnbc.com. And we'll be back right after this.